Hi to whomever I might have been inflicting this video upon. I'm Letty. Welcome back or welcome if you're new here. And this is the first video I'm actually like filming in Berlin and isn't about like moving and that kind of thing. So welcome to my new room. It's a mess, but I'm trying to make the best out of it. So today is the 15th of April. I'm gonna post this video a bit later probably just because i'm so lazy about editing but this means that we're like in the middle of spring here in germany and this is the first real spring i experienced in rio we don't really have like the four seasons it's mostly just like hot and dry hot and rainy so we don't really get the whole bees and birds and flowers thing we don't get a real winter we don't get like golden leaves none of that classic like idea of the seasons that like the northern hemisphere has kind of projected onto media and obviously i also love the real weather it's so special to me it's so specific and i'm super glad that i got to experience that for most of my life but like growing up always watching like northern hemisphere media of course you get this romanticized idea of the passing of the seasons and i'm really excited to experience that and to experience real spring because up until now, it's been really great. I've seen a rainbow, there are tulips growing on the street. I hear the birds singing every morning. I saw like this huge flowering pink tree full of bees around my house. And I was like, damn. So that was all true. That wasn't just like the poets being overly romantic. Spring is real, turns out. However, in a city like Berlin and many others that I assume some of you must be from, spring is still not warm enough to really bust out the little flowery dresses today for example it's 10 degrees i think this week we might get to 19 but it's very wavering and we will still be getting some cold up until like i guess midsummer and i wanted to make a video about transitional outfits for spring involving dresses because i know when this time comes we all want to bust out you know the sundresses and all that and i having my style i want to wear dresses year round which is actually something i was so worried coming to live here i was like oh my god how am i gonna survive not getting to wear dresses for so much of the year but i think i've cracked the code to how to like adapt dresses for cold weather and this is gonna be about spring so i won't be wearing like thermal wear and tights but if you're watching this in winter or if you live somewhere really really cold where it's still like just way too cold for like one layer or two layers of clothing in the spring or even the summer um, you can just adapt that with a lot of those you know typical winter hacks we know thermal or fleece leggings thermal um, clothing under your clothes more turtlenecks more coats all of that so yeah i'll probably try to give all the tips that i have acquired as a girl from a really hot tropical country trying to make my romantic style work somewhere much much colder okay so this dress is the basis of our first outfit and as you can see it's very much not appropriate for rainy 10 degree weather or lower i wanted to start with like the tiniest most summery dress i have to show you that you really can adapt anything to this weather and if you have like a limited wardrobe and you can't really like have dresses for every season absolutely your summer dresses can be made um, appropriate for spring or winter or autumn whatever first of all please ignore the fact that this is extremely um wrinkled it was like a jumbled up in my bag and i just don't have like the brain to actually iron things i just let them hang and hope for the best i love this dress i love the puffy sleeves i love the length i love the top and i love the open back it's actually my favorite part, but of course, that's a big problem if it's 10 degrees outside and your whole back is out. Sorry, I'm not really gonna put it on, but imagine a white or skin colored turtleneck under this, okay? Because suddenly that makes the short sleeves and the like deep neckline and the open back much more appropriate. If you live somewhere much colder or you're trying to adapt this for winter, of course, you can wear thermal underclothes then like a knit turtleneck and then the dress for our short little skirt we are adapting that by adding another skirt to it i'm going with this pleated white skirt today because i think the pleats with the scattered effect on the top part of the dress makes me look really statuesque and i kind of love that of course under the skirt you can imagine tights thermal leggings a pair of pants honestly the great part of wearing long flowy skirts in the winter or spring or autumn or whenever it is a little bit colder 
that a lot can fit under it so the layering magically comes in you can even wear sweatpants under them and then we're adding in another layer and this is a lot more like potent than i feel like people give it credit for i feel like people really don't consider it that much Ta-da! a corset has been added to the outfit i feel like corsets are really underestimated as layering elements for warmth because of course they're usually like they have no sleeves and they can be small and with the lacing of course there's gonna be like a big piece of skin that's not really covered or at least a lot of entryways for a cold air but that's not really that big of a problem if you're wearing it with a lot of stuff underneath and the fact that corsets mostly close by lacing is a positive in that sense because you can layer a lot and have it still fit you unlike a lot of other fitted garments that usually become very annoying to deal with when you have a bunch of other layers under them. The thing with corsets is that they inherently as a piece have a lot of layers of fabric. You will at least have the outer layer and the lining and usually at least one of those fabrics will be thicker because that's kind of required for the structure of the garment. But usually you will also have interfacing and then all of the boning and details that make a corset structured as it is supposed to be. They're usually quite stiff and thick and they keep a lot of warmth in while also helping you keep your shape among all those layers of clothing you're using to keep yourself warm. I have a problem with winter clothes that I think a lot of the times the inspiration we see for them is a lot less romantic than spring or summer. Even if it is not winter, whenever it is cold, I feel like people resort to more modern silhouettes and honestly they kind of give up on looking cute at all which i respect it's cold windy rainy snowy you don't really want to like have to worry about your outfit on top of all of that but i assume if you're watching this video and you follow me or something you probably like you know always looking your best and also having an ethereal romantic air about you um, no matter the season. So when I find myself despairing in a sea of like puffer jackets and parkas, I look back onto um, historical fashion because I think there's a lot of inspiration for colder weather there. You live in Brazil, um, whenever you watch something historical, you always think like, how were people wearing those dresses because it's so hot? Um, of course, it was colder back then, not just because of global warming, but also because we had less like urban deserts, places where there are no trees, just pavement, so all of the heat gets trapped. Of course, a lot else went into that, but just the fact that we always like wonder how people in hotter climates wore those traditionally European clothes shows that there is something inherently so warm about them, and that is the fact that they had a lot of inherent layers. You know, the underwear had a lot more layers than what we wear today, and you had, you know, layers of the structure and padding, all of that under even another bigger dress. So I get a lot of inspiration from that to, you know, dress warm without compromising my style. And so the tip for that is focus on the inner layers and less on the outer layers. If you're always thinking, oh, I need the biggest jacket ever to keep myself warm, not only are you compromising your silhouette and your style, but you're also honestly just like losing a chance to keep yourself warm much more efficiently because there are so many inner layers you can work with with undergarments and you know underclothes and tights and all of that so think a lot about what's going on inside and not just your jacket i do recognize that we have kind of hidden the dress right now because it's mainly just wigs because we have the corset and the skirt and all that but this is just one outfit and i'm gonna show you some others that take advantage of the dresses skirt rather than the top and also a way to just wear the dress as the main piece and still be warm Are you tired of seeing me in this dress? Too bad because I'm gonna be buried in it. Side note, I think the camera was way too low before so if you're just now seeing my face again, I am so sorry. But the point of the clothes, not me, so we're just gonna deal with that. I refuse to refilm all of that. Crazy story about this dress, um, there's this Brazilian brand I used to really like, Loja 3. 
Um, and everyone asks me where this dress is from and I always tell them it's from Royal Trace but I don't think you can get them anymore. I had bought something else from them and I had gotten like a big cash bag and I was surfing the site looking for something to buy which by the way don't do the whole cash bag thing as a lie you're spending more money anyway like if you weren't already gonna buy something don't buy something just because you got cash back. I was surfing the site and I found this dress but it wasn't available. Like it was there, but they said there were no sizes. And I was obsessed with it as soon as I saw it. I love green and I love this cutout detail with the open back. You can tell I love open backs. I just think the back is one of the most beautiful parts of the human body and I really like mine. So I like highlighting that. So I did the thing of like asking them to warn me when my size would be available. And then I got an email a few weeks later like, hey, the dress is here in your size. So I bought it, of course. But then, like a few days later, people were, like were asking me where it was from, and I looked it up to give them the link, and it just had disappeared from the site. Like it wasn't even listed, but saying there were no available sizes, it was just completely gone. So I guess I just stopped making this, and I really don't know why because it's gorgeous. Everyone asks me about it, and I've never seen anyone else with it. So I don't know if they produce it for a very short amount of time. I don't know why I told you the whole story. I guess it's just to explain like how much I feel like this dress was made for me. And also I'm not the gatekeeper. I just can't find a link to give people. Anyways, with this dress, we're gonna do the opposite of the last one. Instead of prioritizing the top, we're prioritizing this beautiful skirt. I feel like sometimes dresses with more complicated constructions on the top can be very I don't know, intimidating to late. You feel like it's gonna be showing through the things you're gonna put on top and it might feel weird, but that's what we're gonna do today and I promise it's gonna look good. We're gonna put this beauty on top again. You can imagine all the heat layering things under this dress that you would need. You could wear heat tech with a turtleneck under this or even a turtleneck on top of this. Um, I'm going with this one, it's transparent and I don't, like the point right now isn't to show this because I'm gonna put something else on top of it. But the reason I'm picking this is because it's very flowy, so like the construction of the top won't be a problem and it's also textured, which is gonna kind of fight the texture of the top of the dress. I feel like this is already kind of cute in like a hippie arts teacher kind of way, but it's not the final look. I apologize for being repetitive, oops, but we are adding another corset. I'm sorry, I just need to hammer home how useful they are. And this one just matches the green of the dress so well. Ta-da, new corset. <laughs> this corset I got in um, like an Instagram giveaway and I swear my whole life, I always thought Instagram giveaways were some kind of lie and no one ever won. But I actually want it. It's by Nikita Jelon. I'll put her Instagram link in the description. So, <laughs> the thing with putting tops on top of dresses to use them as skirts is that usually you're gonna have the problem where you completely lose your waist, which by the way is not a problem at all. I'm completely against those like standardized ideas of what a good silhouette is. I personally love losing my waist. Really, I love losing my shape in general. I love perfectly monochromatic flowy clothes that just make my body kind of disappear in a cloud of mist but that wasn't what i was going for with this specifically because i just think like the difference in fabric of the top and the skirt and just the way it kind of fit wasn't giving like ethereal it was as i said giving hippie arts teacher which is fair but isn't really what i'm going for by adding this corset not only am i adding a lot more warmth with all the layers that it adds to the outfit i'm also giving myself shape back and in my opinion just making the outfit much more cohesive with it on i don't mind the fact that i can't tuck the end of the skirt in because i feel like there's a nice like juxtaposition of colors here we have green cut by cream cut by green and cream again so it's just more harmonic and just makes a lot more sense I love leaving like the bottom of clothes like this over skirts with a corset. I wore a similar outfit the other day with a white blouse and a pink skirt and I just felt like that white between the green and the pink made everything make, make much more sense. I just feel like it adds a level of interest and movement to a silhouette which is given by the quote-unquote like obvious choice of tucking a shirt into a skirt. I honestly really love this outfit. It's honestly really warm. I'm getting warm in my room right now. I opened the door because I just couldn't deal with it. 
And then both of these outfits have depended on a piece not everyone has, which is the corset. I feel like the first one less than this one, because the first one could absolutely work just like that. But I just want to say there are alternatives to that because corsets I know can be quite expensive and sometimes hard to find because they're very like niche. So if you're having a hard time finding corsets, I would say look on Etsy, try to find, you know, specialized um, artisans for that and look um, into lingerie. You probably won't find corsets with this kind of shape but a lot of really similar and really gorgeous stuff is there. Look in the lingerie section of thrift stores, which I think is something that people often ignore because they think it's kind of gross, but you're not there to buy underwear, you're there to buy corsets, which are a little bit different. You can also look at like standard like lingerie stores, which I also think are kind of underrated in that sense. You never consider how you might find things there that work for outfits and not just like um, underwear. But also any kind of like, finicky top would work i think any tight or structured or tops with lacing details anything a little bit more complex and form-fitting would work here okay pretend you can't notice that this is a different day um yesterday i got sidetracked by cake and didn't finish filming um but yeah i wasn't gonna mention it but i think the light is different and also my makeup because i just could not get it right today so yeah, um, we are finally here for our third final look of sundresses as chilly weather appropriate attire. Since we have already done dress as top and dress as skirt, we are gonna finally focus on just the dress as itself. This is the dress that we're using today. It's one of my absolute favorites, so of course I wouldn't want to hide any part of it in an outfit, but even though it's quite summery, quite spring-like, I would still want to wear it in early spring or even winter or autumn. This is from a really cool, ethical, slow fashion brand um, in Brazil, and I'll link it down below. I don't know if they ship internationally, but if you're Brazilian, you're in luck. What we're doing is, of course, adding the turtleneck and any hypothetical other thermal wear situation to add some warmth to this because it really is quite, you know, like flimsy and open. And this skirt is both to add warmth beside any other hypothetical tights or turmoil situation you could have. It's also acting as some kind of petticoat. It's adding more flowiness and puffiness to this silhouette. Okay, a few skirts later, here's what we got. I just wanted to find the perfect skirt and the other two just weren't working as I wanted it to. I do think some people might still find this a little weird, just like the difference in the layering, but personally I think the fact that the turtleneck and the skirt match so perfectly in terms of texture and color makes it feel like I'm just wearing something like a whole gown underneath this dress and makes everything more cohesive. I do know I'm talking a lot about harmony here, and I don't want to come across as if I adhere to like a very specific idea of what is elegance or harmony in an outfit because I do also think sometimes things being too match matchy makes them completely uninteresting. I absolutely don't think fashion has to adhere to specific Apollonian ideas of harmony and coherence. It's like when I'm baking brownies, I always add more salt than the recipe say just because I think the salt brings out the chocolatey taste and that's something that I also apply to fashion a lot of the times adding something that juxtaposes the original idea can make everything just seem much more interesting and more impactful. However, in this video specifically, I was seeking out to, you know, deal with the issue I often have of maintaining the romantic essence in an outfit while also just dealing with practical problems like the cold. So that's what we're doing here. I just wanted to like make that disclaimer. Another side note, I love long sleeves, like tight long sleeves under short puffy sleeves. It's like a faux Juliet sleeve. And for some reason, it always reminds me of that one look Yennefer wears in the first season of The Witcher. If you know, you know. I was thinking if I wanted to go crazy, I could put this on. It would look odd, but at the same time, I feel like it kind of would have... I don't know how to explain, but kind of an armor vibe just because of like the extra layer and glazing. But that would be more out there, so we're keeping it safe today. So one thing is to never be scared to really like artificially change up the sweat of a dress. I think I didn't say much in this video. Do you guys feel educated? Should I do another look? Okay, one last fit just for fun. 
This was hanging by my door and you've probably seen it before. It's one of my very favorite dresses. It's actually um, a vintage Victoria's Secret straight gown. And I thought I have this little um, refrain jacket and we could do a bit of like that lingerie under that trench coat vibe while also wearing something more appropriate for rainy spring weather. Does this look cool? Are we rocking it? I kind of feel like we are. Wait, there's something wrong. What is happening? I really dig this vibe. It's very different from the rest of the fits, I think. But it's cool. Fox fur isn't very appropriate for a rain, though. So that's our video for today. I hope what I said made sense, or that at least some of the outfits and all that was entertaining for you. I think I kind of lost track of what I was meaning to say, but mostly I just wanted to show you how I'm experimenting with dressing for colder weather, which isn't really something I have experience in outside of, you know, vacations, which I feel like always feel differently. Actually having to put an outfit every day for months in cold weather is very different and requires a lot more fashion power. I'll link, if there is a link, I'll link all the pieces below and if I can find them secondhand or more ethical um, alternatives and if I can't find the piece, I'll also put some alternatives. Honestly, all of this is pretty easy to thrift. I think like this for example, like not this one specifically, I haven't seen this one, but vintage Victoria's Secrets nightgowns are honestly really, really easy to find. And I feel like they're often overpriced online, so if you do have the chance, maybe check your local thrift store if you're looking for something romantic and cute and not that expensive. Um, I feel like I always give this tip, but sometimes things are cooler in the lingerie and um, nightwear section than in the like dresses and the corset section. Another tip for thrifting is try to look for things with words that older people would use, I think. Because for example, a word that you see a lot of younger people using recently is coquette, um, which honestly is really funny. But that is like a specific term that younger people use to describe a certain aesthetic and it can make searching for secondhand pieces online easier, yes, but usually those things will be a little bit more like overpriced because younger people know that other younger people are looking for that kind of thing. Meanwhile, that sort of style also used to be popular a few years ago, but most of those older people who are selling those older pieces won't be using that kind of word. So try to think something like, how would your mom describe this piece? And search for specific vintage brands or necklines or fabrics. I'll come back when the weather is warmer to talk to you about the opposite problem of this video how to look cute when you're melting. I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, leave a like. If you didn't, leave a dislike. It's a free country. Subscribe if you want to see more of this face. And yeah, I'm excited to show you my bourbon adventures. Bye!